Hello once again everyone for another update on the uh, Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 run. As always, sponsored by Trefoil.be. Check them out, use the code Lawrence Plays to get 20% off your server costs. So, what have we been doing today? Well, today we're going to be taking a look at what um, Mark and Mike have been doing. Uh, Mike has been continuing to work on the on the module city, which is this huge area over here, which is I mean, to be fair, this is mostly, it feels like it's mostly stations, but that often happens when you have a big, um, when, when you're doing a lots and lots of complex builds. But he's got, yeah, a huge rack of stations all the way up the middle, and then a load of build, a load of construction all the way around the edge. So as we looked at last time, down here at the bottom, he's making the um, electronic components that are required for the modules, and the little motor things. And why you need a motor in a module, I have no idea, but it's part of the recipe, so it's going to have to go in there. Then from that, and all of the stuff flooding in from the stations over here, He's then making um, Productivity 1 modules over here. We looked at this before. Um, and then Productivity 2 here. I think this is new. I think this is, I think this is about where he got... Or maybe this is where he got to. But anyway, he's now also got a set of machines making Productivity Module 3s. Th uh, and these are running a bit slowly due to a... Due, basically due to the lack of um, Vulcanite coming in. Because at the moment, I'm shipping out... Uh, from, from, the, from the facility you saw yesterday, I'm shipping out a, a, um, a delivery cannon full of Vulcanite, which is a stack, which I think is probably 50. Um, and, and those are going out every minute or so, maybe? Uh, let's have a look at the production rate. So we'll find the Vulcanite in here. Vulcanite, that's... Uh, Let's look over the last hour. This one, 211 per minute. Okay, so that's probably... If it is actually genuinely a stack size of 50, then that's four four capsules per minute. Or maybe maybe it's 100 and it's two capsules. Anyway, it's, it's 211 per minute. But over here, not only have we got um, Mark trying to pull in enormous quantities of it for his smelting, we've got Mike trying to pull in massive quantities of it for making these modules. So... Between those two, it's, it, it's being used up a lot faster than it's being produced, let's put it that way. So, unfortunately, the system is not currently able to keep up. But, if we look at these, we can see we've made um, about 14, 20, 20, we've made a, a few... We've made a few, actually most of these most of these machines have made have made six or seven um, productivity modules each. So the belts must have filled up um, before he before he turned this on, so, because otherwise it would have just been the front machines grabbing all of it. And so if we look down somewhere down here, yes. So he's now got stations shipping all of these out. So we're shipping out productivity one because that's needed for one of the science packs. So those are being taken down to the bus to be shipped up in the um, in the rocket to space. And then he's got stations down here for um, oh efficiency one for the same reason, but also product, but also to mark the tier three modules of, of efficiency, productivity, and speed. And so down here we, we're doing uh, we're doing okay. We've got 58 um, productivity modules plus another 94, so that almost 150, about 150. Um, that's a, a start. Down here we've got about 300 um, efficiency modules. Presumably they're a slightly easier recipe. Yes, look at the, yeah, look at the rate they're coming in. They're actually they're actually being produced, so that that's that's much better. Uh, the speed modules have only made seven of those, and I'll get onto that in a minute. But yeah, you can see that we've got a bit of a um, a bit of a throughput problem with the uh, with the module production because of the exotic ingredients that are required. So down here the tier one, even the tier ones are struggling. Uh, let's take a look. What what are you missing? You're missing green circuits. Yes, I did notice actually. I, I had a quick look at these stations before we started, and most of them are have stuff in them and no train. Copper has no stuff and no train, so there's a copper throughput problem. There's a there's plenty. Looks like there's a decent there's a decent amount of silicon, decent amount of plastic, and the way I can tell is if all of the warehouses are full and there's no train parked in the station, or all the warehouses are populated and there's no train parked in the station, things are probably okay. So glass is okay. <clears throat> Green circuits were not okay, but a train has just swung in to drop some off. So that's now been fixed in inverted commas. Um, a train has turned up with some. But there's still it's still not being produced as quickly as we would like because if we follow the green belt route, circuit belt, you can see there's a big gap on here. So we did run out of those at one point. We've topped it up now, but there was a gap. Um, red circuits have that same problem. There's um, the warehouses are all empty, but there's still a train here because the uh, the pickup place for the for the, um, for the red circuits doesn't have sufficient um, red circuits now for a full train to, for a train to go out there and pick up. So we're short of red circuits. And short of green circuits, so those those are potential problems. I thought we're just using them up too quickly because this um, module station is a bit over over uh, over ambitious. Then looking at the solid fuel, we have the opposite problem. A train is to, uh, there is a tra the, the warehouses are all full, but there's a train parked here and sitting here going, I can't unload. 
Now, this is because the um, the, the numbers I had again had a quick look at this earlier, and the station appears to be set up properly. So um, we've got the um, we've got all we've got the checking amount of solid fuel, thirty two thousand, the amount in there. However, the train has got stuck here. <clears throat> there are two causes of this, and if either one of those is fixed, then it, the problem will go away. But because they both happened, we, the train has got stuck. Now, if we look at the amount in these in these warehouses, this one's got 5,100, this has got 5,004, this has got 8,000, this one's got 6.3. So this one has hit capacity, and th there's an imbalance between them. So this one's hit capacity, and therefore um, the train is trying to unload this, this wagon. There's plenty of room to unload it into here, but it can't unload it across there, so there's an imbalance between them. That could be fixed potentially by putting circuit conditions across the outputs here, saying these belts should only run when there's a sufficiency of the in, in the warehouses or something like that but um we haven't we haven't that that, that kind of needs to be done or by putting in a um, an averager across these and, and and doing it that way the alternative is to is to go in here and in an un Un, un, unlimit these warehouses because the amount that goes into these into the amount that goes into the station is limited by the circuitry over here so in theory you don't actually need to have a limit on these warehouses so if I get rid of that and copy it across to the other ones then this wagon will will fairly quickly finish emptying because solid fuel doesn't stack all that high and the train can leave to go off and get some more but as you can see the train limit is zero so we won't be getting another train until we've got through a chunk of this um, the solid fuel. Now it's possible I've just booted the problem down the road a little bit, and in the future we may run into the same sort of issue. If this, if this, if for some reason this warehouse is unloading more slowly, and so it's about it's an imbalance that keeps getting created and added to. <clears throat> then it's possible that we could have this problem again later on when this warehouse fills up completely. But I think that's fairly unlikely, partly because I think this warehouse would store more than this um, combinator is set to. <laughs> no, it wouldn't actually, because this only stack because the solid fuel only stacks up to 50, there's room for 25,000 in this warehouse. And this is this is monitoring for trying to keep the station at about 32,000, uh, or up to 32,000. Uh, because this station is being trying, trying to be kept at between 24 and 32,000, it is theoretically possible that we might run into an overflow in this warehouse. It's pretty unlikely, I think, but it, it is a possibility. So anyway, that's that. That was a minor issue and could be fixed in in several different ways. Oh, and there we go. The uh, the green circuits have run out and the train is stuck here. So that's a green circuit production problem. And if we look over here, I suspect, having seen there was a copper um, throughput problem, I suspect it's down to the copper inputs. Oh no, there's plenty of copper here for the red circuit. Ooh, what's going on here? We have oh yeah we have a shortage of silicon here now this the these um these belts here need to be fixed which will help a little yes that are ah, there we go yes the silicon problem here is entirely down to this this is the sort of problem I was talking about that might happen over there but this one's a, is a worse one um so in this case the silicon we've got the twenty five thousand silicon all in this one warehouse here because every time a train turns up it fills up all four warehouses but. But this one isn't getting emptied because these belts are blocked. So we need to go in here and basically we just need we just need to come in here with with some red underground belts and go. Actually, this should go from there. Uh, that should not be there. Uh, and then oh, yeah. And then we put in a red the other side of it there. And down here we do put a red one in as well. And that will fix it. And this will then start to flow again. And then we can find out whether there's still a problem. There might there may be. I'm. I wouldn't like to say for certain, but this should, this will certainly help. It'll get it flowing. There'll be 25,000 silicon to use up, and then we can go back to worrying about whether there's, when the, whether there's an insufficiency of copper. <laughs> but that'll take a moment for the bots to come over with the relevant things. Over here, green circuits. Well, actually, this system, as far as I can tell, at a glance, right now, is working absolutely fine. There are no problems here whatsoever. Um, we're just not making green circuits fast enough. There's... Um, there's a, a, thr a throughput problem that we're making. We're making almost three yellow belts here. Um, sorry, no, those those red belts. We're making almost three red belts. So that's probably about four or five yellow belts. Uh, it's flying out into the train here. It's just insufficient, apparently. So, so we're going to need to um, maybe. I don't know. We could. This system is running almost as fast as it can. Um, yeah, we could. We could upgrade these stone belts to red belts. Um, and that would then bring more through up here and allow this to run a bit and then we could put a bit more on the top of it and have these belts being a bit fuller on the way out. Um, that would probably do, that would fix it to a different extent, but I think to be honest the easiest way to fix this might be just to make a, another copy of this entire town and put it 
somewhere else. It doesn't matter where we put it. We could put it over here. There's a bit of a gap there. Well, that's a bit close to the smelter. We could put we could put it anywhere we want. But having another town producing the green circuits, I think, is going to be required if we're going to be using them up at this sort of rate. And that will then, of course, put extra strain on the um, the stone bricks and the copper. But as far as I can tell, they seem to be keeping up. Let's have a look at the smeltery. This is the traditional uh, Factorio yak shaving, where you go back and look through the, loop through the system and try and see where the, um, whether there are problems. So there's a bit of a problem here on the rate we're bringing the copper ore in at. So if we do increase this, there may be some issues there. Um, this is churning through. I mean, this is churning through at full speed, but there's not actually that much copper coming out. There's, I mean, there's there's a fair amount if you look at the amount on the belts, but it's the belts are nowhere near full. So I think what we probably need to do here is move on to vulcanite-based smelting for the copper. The problem is we don't have enough vulcanite for this, so it's a tricky one. Um, but yeah, we as you can see here, we yeah we do have a problem with the copper. That is that is a shortage. Over here, stone bricks. Stone bricks are crazy. We've got loads of stone bricks, two hundred thousand of them. So stone bricks, are not a problem. Copper, very much a problem. I think this is going to be the um, the limiting factor on how quickly we can put, churn, churn the circuits out and therefore how quickly we can churn the lower tier modules out. So, back over to the modules. <laughs> we've, we've gone through here, yeah, so as you can see, we're, we're running low on copper here. A lot of these belts are, are, are not full. And that's, that's yeah, that, that is simply down to copper supply. Um, but we are then yes. Yeah, so as I say, we're trying to make the we're making up the making up the tier two modules and then making the tier three modules up here. The if we if we look through the tier one modules are short of um, of green circuits as we discussed. The tier two modules are short of tier one modules because these are short of circuits. Up here, these are all short of vulcanite because there's, a, there's only so fast it can be pulled out of Taishakuten. Um, I've got all I've got all of the core mines running. Maybe the next thing to do is going to be to go over to the other other vulcanite planet in this in this uh, system which is Agnea here so this is this is much bigger this is a 2000 diameter as opposed to um, Taishakuten 600 so it's more than three times the uh, diameter which presumably means it's well it's going to be producing a lot more um, core fragments per second I don't wouldn't like to say exactly how many but it's going to be a lot more and it's also a zero percent threat so it's not a difficult planet to go out to but it is waterless <clears throat> And that is, as it says, a hazard, uh, and that means it's very, very difficult to generate power out there. If we look, if we look at the surface, you'll see it's a barren, featureless wasteland. To um, to borrow a line, with just a complete lack of any any traces of water. It does quite a bit of imicide, but no water whatsoever. So there are there are options. You can ship in water by um, you can ship in water through a uh, through delivery cannons, and then perhaps do we have condensing turbines yet? Let's have a look. Yes, we've made condenser turbines, so we could, we could we could bring in water um, by delivery cannon, and then use condenser turbines to to, to limit the amount of um, uh, w water we waste, and then probably go for nuclear power on for that. Uh, we could use solar panels. We could use massive massive fields of solar panels, and just accept that this planet will only work during the day, which brings it down to a 50% effectiveness ratio. Alternatively, we could use solar panels and accumulators, but accumulators are a faff, especially if you want to store something big. And and what's the day-night cycle like on this planet? Uh, 17 minutes. That's really long. The Nor Norvian standard is six minutes. So a 17-minute day-night cycle would mean you'd need an incredible number of um, uh, of accumulators to store the store all the power to keep it running overnight. So that one's, I won't say it's out, but it's certainly difficult. Uh, we could, especially with delivery cannons using so much power. Although we could turn the delivery cannons off at night, that might be a, a sensible way to do it. Um, so yeah, so we don't want to, we don't want to use it for that. We don't use it like that because that'll, ideally, because that'll cause those sort of problems. What other options have we got? I think that's basically all of our options. We can use we can use solar, which will only work, which will work 50% of the time. We can use solar with some sort of backup, and that could be batteries, which are a faff because it's got a really long day-night cycle and battery and accumulators just feel expensive and difficult to put together we could use steam storage but that uses a lot enormous quantities of water again um, even with the condenser turbines i think it'll still get through a fair amount of it we could use nuclear which will you again use the condenser turbines but it's not going to be quite so bad for the water i don't think or maybe it, it's probably going to be just as bad for water actually come to think of it and i think that's about it because we don't have beam power yet and we don't have spaceships to transport the water around so yeah, it's not ideal, but we might have to go out here anyway, just simply because Taishikuten can't produce the um, the vulcanite at the rate we want. I suppose secret option number n plus one is that we could go out to a Taishikuten, we could start mining the um, we, could, we could we could start mining some of these some of the uh, ore patches around here, like these massive vulcanite patches here with the five six, five or six million, and then also we'd have to start mining stone and iron and copper and so on to to, to make the delivery cannon capsules, and that. 
to be fair, that is a possibility. It would mean we, we could then move away from this system over here where we're just we're making everything from the core fragments. But it's non-infinite, and that feels less nice in a way. So I don't know. It's it's going. We're going to have to make some decisions there, and I'm not quite sure what the right decisions are. So yes, that that means we, so we are as I say we're very short of vulcanite for this and for the, and for the smeltery area over there, which I shall talk about a bit more in a moment. So that's that's the uh, that's the limiting factor for the productivity three three modules. But we can make uh, given just the um, generic uh, ground based um, mundane resources like glass and green circuits and so on, we can make massive massive quantities of productivity two. So. Yeah, we've got we've got the we've got the resources to make at least the tier two modules. So that's a it's a good start. I'd like to have a lot more of the threes, but we're gonna have to we're gonna have to be patient about that. So I imagine the the twos are having similar sort of things. So it looks like the the the, so the twos the speed modules are having similar sort of um, issues or things. Um, now over here we can see that we're making the um, the tier ones as fast as we want. We've got all the ingredients coming in here. Now yes they do require the solid fuel and the, uh, and, the and the green circuits which as I touched on are, are mildly problematic but they're being made. Up here the tier twos again tier two seem to be fine. Again, they also need the green modules but that uh, green modules green circuits but that hasn't been a problem yet. Then up here yes the tier threes. Now these require what do they require? These require ah these require the imasite crystals, and I'm shipping these in at about 50 every every not very often. <clears throat> so these machines are very very gradually filling up with imasite crystals, and when they finally get up to the ridiculous 40 they require in order to make a module, uh, they'll make a module. So that's why we don't have very many speed modules at the moment, because each one requires almost an entire delivery cannon capsules worth of imasite. The imasite is the, uh, the imasite crystals are dropping in over here. Um, they're being then loaded up into the station. So, because of the way this is set up, we've got two thirds of them being loaded into the station. So the station now has 970, which is I mean that's not bad. I feel that's I'm, I'm chucking this stuff over at quite at a reasonable rate given how difficult the stuff is to get is to to, to mine up and, and process. Um, and then the other third of it is going over this way. So actually, every time every three delivery cannons that arrive, we can make another another module on average. And it's actually ever so slightly worse than that, because eight, well, when the three arrive, it's split between two belts coming down here, and so and then comes over to here. So we get so every six every six capsules that arrive, we will make two modules, and that's kind of slow. <laughs> but the thing is, the, the way um, well, I'll touch on that thought in, thought in a second. The efficiency modules they are going, but they're, they're they're limited by the copper production, which is um, so that's another another mildly problematic one. Uh, for the tier 1s. The tier 2s are limited by the tier 1s because they're limited by copper. But other than that, we seem to be basically okay up here. Then the tier 3, oh, the tier 3s are actually running, but they are basically limited by cryonite production. Now cryonite is being brought in at a slightly faster rate because that's, or no, cryonite is being brought in at about the same rate, but is less problematic because it's only being used for these modules at the moment. So Tristan's producing cryonite at about the same rate I'm producing vulcanite. But instead of being used for two things, it's being used for one thing. And that means we're producing these tier three modules a little bit more quickly. And so that's why, as you saw down in the station, we've got rather more of those than we have of the others. Is the other number, how are the numbers? It also only requires 30 cryonite rod as well, so that's a massive help. And what you might have noticed, um, and I have sort of noticed from looking at the recipes, is that um, in Space Exploration 0.6, the different module recipes are kind of imbalanced against each other based on how useful the modules are. So efficiency modules are generally thought of as being the least useful, so they're the cheapest to make. Then the speed modules are the next most useful, so they're sort of the medium price. And the productivity modules are by far the most useful because they enable, they allow you to get free stuff um, rather than just making your machines run a bit quicker or, giving you, or using a bit less power. So these are by far the most valuable and so they're the most expensive and the most difficult to make. So they require massive quantities of vulcanite and circuits and everything. I bet if I look over at the other ones, this is 10, 10 red, 15 blue and 50 vulcanite. Over here we see 5 red, 10 blue and 30, and 30 cryonite. So the numbers are significantly lower on these and presumably the blue ones will be somewhere in the middle. Uh, yeah, 8, 12, and 40. So you can see, it's um, if, if, if the exotic resources, it requires more of them, to, and uh, all the resources, actually, it requires more of them to make the productivity modules because they're more powerful, they're more useful. So, you know, for game balancing reasons, it, it that's how it is. Oh, the sulfur has the same problem as the um, as the uh, solid fuel did. That, that, that's also going to need fixing. The rest of them seem to be okay, apart from random bits of dishonesty in the, um, in, in the station um, uh, text work up there. 
<laughs> after oh, and after a, a bit of a warning with the uh, smelt from the smeltery, Mike has also put in a fuel drop-off station here, which is providing fuel to all of the uh, all of the stations in the um, in in the uh, in the product in the in the module city because we discovered that. Um, the, the new smeltery, as I, I touched on this last week, the new smeltery didn't have a fueling station, and so all the trains ran out of fuel. Now, uh, so um, Mike has obviously taken that as a bit of a uh, a warning, not not that he's not that he's had any problems yet, but that he might in the future. So he's thought, well, I'm just going to slap fuel into all of my trains here, just just in case, and that's very sensible. Well done, Mike. <laughs> and you won't often hear me say Mike's been sensible. <laughs> okay, um, he's also rerouting. <laughs> so. Um, Okay, so in in the um, in the comments last week uh, that we we had, or in, in the video and then in the comments, we I, I came along and I looked at the um, the blue the blue circuits and the um, and I think the sulphur belts coming out of here, and I went, what on earth has he been doing here? Because these belts are running all the way up to the top and then running all the way back down again, and we thought that seemed a little bit a little bit weird and a little bit strange. So um, <laughs> there was. There was there was some pondering and some questioning for in, uh, from myself and from the and from the comments and on the, on Discord as well. Uh, Mike produced some fairly good defences as well, to be fair. But also we reckoned that um, actually it was a bit silly having the belts doing that, and it didn't actually help in the way he was claiming it did. Um, so he's rerouted those under under um, from, from uh, due, due, due to bowing to a popular opinion, should we say? <laughs> so now yeah, the, the the belts go through in a slightly more sensible way. So sure, sure that's nice. Only the efficiency module stuff was all built up to, in, in the last session. That was, none of this was here before. before. Um, I don't. I sort of talked about the whole thing as a general thing. So he's, he's built the he's built the production for three, for the speed three, prod three, and all of the efficiencies. And then we've got the as I say, we've got the stations down here. And these are set up. These are the ones that are required for science. So we've got the as I say, we've got the the tier ones and the uh, tier one prods, tier one efficiencies being taken away because those I think are needed for um, production science. Uh, yes, we need tier we need tier one prods for production science, and I think utility science is the same with efficient, efficiency. Yes, so those will need to be taken away to the rocket and taken off to space in order to be uh, in order to be scienced up in, appropriately up in space. So we'll uh, that's something we'll need to be set up, and this is going to be interesting because we're going to need a lot of extra stations down um, somewhere somewhere around here, and it seems silly to put them over here and have them. Pass, drop drop the stuff out onto the bus to feed it all the way along the bus when the only thing it's needed for is to put it into the rocket, uh, this rocket. So maybe we'll end up with a load more stations. Maybe we could put in a load of stations in here. So it's, a, it's a bit of a distance, but it's less of a distance than the entire run, run of the bus. We could put in some stations down here. Uh, that would limit how far, how much extra we can build up the bus, but I don't think the bus is going to get in a huge amount wider. Um, Longer probably, but probably not a lot wider, because I think we're getting to the point where any f future major expansions we're going to do are probably going to be done off the bus, um, belt uh, belt factories notwithstanding. <laughs> so we'll have to have a think about that. What the best way to do that is. Um, but yes, they are available on the train system now to be brought down here as and when they're needed. Our factory is getting pretty big, and this is this is just the Norvian part of it. He's also put in a, an upgrade to the plastic production. So plastic was one of the uh, the bottlenecks last week. So he's done it the, the a fairly simple way by coming along here and upgrading all these belts to uh, to red belts. So we get more. Uh, so in theory, we can get twice as much plastic flowing out of here as long as these machines can keep up. And in order to make the, the machines a little bit faster, um, he's put in. Uh, the, the standard rest, the standard thing of two productivity modules and one speed. And I say it makes the machines faster. You'll notice the crafting speed is still one. However, because productivity is plus 12 percent, these machines are now to, will actually technically be running at 112 percent speed um, because they get that. The the productivity isn't isn't in it taking. 12% longer, or it, it isn't in it taking in 12% less and producing the same amount of stuff, but each time a machine runs it will do 12% extra of a build. So even though it says crafting speed 1, it's actually 1.12 in a, in a funny way of looking at it. Um, he's also redone, apparently redone the coal belts to uh, neat, neaten them up and presumably to help with the other uh, supply of plastic coming through. But this does now appear to be sufficient to have caught up over here. We now have enough plastic so that's working he says as a train pulls up to pick up a load more of it <laughs> but it is working um, as you can see we've got I mean if you've got 50,000 in all of your chests in all of your warehouses then that suggests that the system is working pretty nicely and that, okay a train has come in because someone's being used somewhere else but you're also being able to you're also replenishing it pretty much as fast as it's being used and if we look over here yeah we've got we do seem to be able to maintain nearly full red belts coming out here so 
yeah, that's definitely more than a yellow belt. So having these reds in here is def definitely worthwhile. He says as the amount drops down slightly slower. That is still slightly more than a yellow belt. But it might be worth squeezing in a couple of extra machines. I don't know where we would though. This it, this, this area has, has built itself into into a bit of a uh, into a bit of a corner. So there isn't there isn't room really room to put in more more of anything on here. Um, so the other the old, other alternative is to put in another another bank of um, plastic production down here and, and put put more belts feeding up this way. So there are ways and means around it. He's also been doing science, which is kind of worrying. We now have we now have a science lake over here, which looks a bit fishy. Actually, it doesn't look fishy, and that's the science in question. So the question was, if in Factorio, if you completely outfish out a outfish a lake, so pull all literally all of the fish out of a lake, will the fish reappear then, a sort of a few hours later? So Mike has gone in, completely roboported up this entire lake. Um, pulled all of the fish out of it uh, with 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 the bots, um, which seems very very cruel. And now we're going to come along here every so often um, and see if the fish have reappeared. Because there's, as I say, there was some debate in the um, on on stream as to whether the fish will finally reappear, whether there's some um, invisible fish eggs somewhere in this lake that will allow the population to recover, or whether Mike has just committed genocide. We shall find out. But I am going to. The thing is, I am going to need those fish because that's probably how I'm going to be making the bio sludge. So it would be convenient if this, if the, if the fish did respawn in this lake, and we'd every so often we could come back and just refish it. Um, but we'll we we shall we shall have to see how that goes. You also note this lake is quite a bit greener on this side than over here. Presumably that's because the pollution is. Yes, the pollution is also much worse on this side than it is over here. We're doing very well at not letting the pollution escape the base. Um, but we're not doing so well at keeping the base clean inside. But I think that's okay. I mean, it doesn't really matter if we if we have a coughing fit every time we go along the bus, as long as the biters don't get excited and come in and chew on the walls. <clears throat> but yeah, actually looking looking around the edge, we are doing. I'd say we're doing. Yeah, we're doing very well at keeping all of the pollution inside, and that is of course due to the um, the massive quantity of um, uh, of uh, air scrubbers, air purifiers that we have all the way around the edge. Um, and the steady, steady stream of dirty, uh, dirty canisters that are coming out. I would say that shows just how dirty the air is around here, but um, actually it doesn't because uh, they get through a, they get through a, a filter every so often, and no matter how much pollution they're, they're pulling in, they don't they don't actually know how much is being pulled in. Okay, so that that covers um, that covers my, uh, Mike's shenaniganery uh, for the from the last episode. So um, if you if you're not already, please make sure you subscribe subscribe to the channel because that that, that really helps boost the number of um, the number of views we get, the number the size of the channel, and helps me sort of go on to the get get grow the channel to the point where I can devote more of my time to making videos. And I'm sure you'd all like to see more videos from me. So what has Mark been up to? He says he's put in an additional miner, mining drill, probably on this uranium mine over here, just to make sure we get all of it. That seems good. Um, ah, he's he's yes, and the, all all the pyroflux plants. He says he's oh, no pyroflux plant. That presumably means over here. Uh, oh, he said he's replaced speed modules with productivity modules. That's not the case. I'm going to um, f to doubt on that. Uh, x to doubt rather. Um, so. Ooh, we do seem to have a good supply of vulcanite coming through, actually. But yeah, what I think you should probably be doing here is replacing all of these speed modules in these machines with productivity modules, and then turning on an additional set, an additional bank of um, of of of, uh, of chemical plants. So, so run this. So take out the speed modules. So this this will halve the speed this runs at, granted, and but then run twice as many machines in order to get twice as much pyroflux, more than twice as much pyroflux flowing out. Uh, no. Not more than twice as much, but slightly more. So instead of instead of running at 12% productivity, we'd run at 18% productivity. We get a bit more pyroflux out, and I think that'd be very valuable. Maybe he's maybe he's done it over here. Um, no, I don't know. So I'm not sure what he means, unless unless they were all speeded before. Over here, we've got a slightly different balance. We've got we've got a minus 30% speed, but we do have a, a plus 24% productivity. So that's quite good. Um, <clears throat> These are all still speeded because you can't you can't productivity the uh, the casting machines. So yeah, we're producing we are producing a nice flow of iron out of here. It does is it sufficient? It seems to be sufficient. We've got 40, we, 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 we've got a large number. Yeah, we've got we've got full on the um on the uh the, the metals that we're produ the metal plates that we're actually producing and using. These iron ingots are going to need to be taken away at some point. The steel ingots are still trickling through, but everything else seems to be full. So yes, I'd say that's working very very nicely. Excellent. So yeah, at some point we're going to switch over to using these um, these stations and start using start using the ingots instead of the um, in, 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 instead of the instead of the plates everywhere. We also need to put in a, a similar system to this for producing copper from vulcanite. But given that I think I imagine that the uh, the limiting factor on this production system at the moment is pyroflux, although we do have quite a lot of it. Um, 
we may need to have a bit of a debate about whether we do that or not. Yeah, if we look over here, we've got... In, in this entire station, we have 2.1 Pyroflux. Now, granted, that's just all being dumped into this train as fast as it's being made. But we still have we still only have 2.1 Pyroflux in the, in, in the station, which is not, not great. Um, yeah, and that again, as I, as I was saying before, is down to how fast we can actually produce the Vulcanite. I've just realised that instead of reading off uh, Mark's uh, list of things he's done. I've been reading off his to-do list, which explains why I was struggling to find out where the uh, the modules were and was criticising what he's been doing there. So uh, sorry about that. That was um, that was completely incorrect. That was his to-do list. That was not what Mark has been doing. Mark has, in fact, he's updated the capsules blueprint. So that's the uh, the one that you, you you saw yesterday. that I'm using over uh, here, here here. It's a Mark design, but um, but I implemented it as is in. He designed it. I I put it down here and built it. Uh, this is the one that's making the capsules from the core fragments. So he's made some updates to that. Um, I think he might have done. It to put to turn some of the raw to turn the rare metals into landfill or something like that, and I'm not sure I agree with that because if you turn land if you turn it into landfill, I don't think you can then ship it out by delivery cannon. So it does compact it up, but it's going to cause problems. So I think I probably would dispute that one. Um, he's fixed the uh, space science systems by um, increasing the amount of science but Norvian science that's being requested. Um, so we're now putting more and more science into not this rocket into this rocket to, um, as you can see there's a lot of science packs in there um, so hopefully that means if we look up in Norbis orbit now we'll see that the science is is science well the science has finished up there and we've run out of sciences to do so clearly the science was working um, he's also yeah there was there was a clog up here where uh, there was I think it was too much rocket fuel was being requested and it was clogging the system up because it filled up the basically this this warehouse filled up completely with rocket fuel and oh and it's done it again so that was that was preventing the stone and other sort of stuff such, such like getting through so we can't request the amount of rocket fuel oh and the problem is this then needs to be hooked up to the the system as well so that the rocket fuel in here is counted towards everything over the whole system and we can make sure Essentially, the rocket fuel that's in here is counted towards the amount that's being against the amount that's being requested. Otherwise, we're just going to keep requesting 5,000, and 5,000 is basically a warehouse full. So, I think what we'll do here is have what what is have this this warehouse pass out into this one, pass rocket fuel out from here into here, as long as there is more than say a thousand in here and then if there's less than 500 in here then we'll have it pass it back so between them they'll keep an appropriate buffer and as, as new stuff comes in it'll flood down here and into here and then as we start to use it up from here it'll be brought back out of here so I think that'll work quite nicely but that does need to be fixed this this red cable across here is very very important otherwise we're just going to keep pulling in more and more and more rocket fuel and as you see it's jammed up again because uh, it looks like Mark only did a, did a, um, a half a half fix there but that's okay we can fix that later there's still plenty of room in this warehouse I think so we should that should be able to sort it out he's added a science alarm presumably that means it's watching to see how many science packs are available and sounding an alarm if we run out of them so the science packs are coming round over here oh here we go yes so we've got all of you know, that's an interesting way of doing it so he's got he's for each of these he's then got a separate um a separate one for saying so for each science. So whenever any of the whenever any of the science packs run low, we'll get a, a thing popping up down here. We'll get an obnoxious noise, um, and we'll, we can go out here and go, oh no, we've run out of green science or whatever, and then have to come back and, fit and fix it. Um, personally, I'd probably have put in a constant combinator with a small negative number on it, and then hooked it up to a single one that says science in general is low. But this way, at least we get to know exactly which one is straight away. So you know that 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 will work fine. He's been messing around with a new idea for train prioritisation. I don't know what he's been doing there. He'll probably tell us in the comments, but I think you better come along to Monday's, uh, Monday's stream and he'll probably talk about it in a lot more detail there because I don't, I don't know what he's been doing there. I've, um, I've obviously missed that one completely. He's also been uh, going out and... Um, liberating more territory, should we say. So uh, we can see up here we've got a... Um, a little a, a combat outpost and the idea of one of these is you drive the artillery train up into it park it round here like this the artillery train sh uh, shells everything within an, an obscene distance um, and then the biters come pouring in at a huge hordes of them and the lasers will hopefully deal with them and this is still here so presumably it worked and the, and the biters didn't overrun it uh, he's got the spiky walls on here as well as you can see which are wonderfully vicious and those that, that means if the biters attack the walls the walls also attack the biters in return so that's quite useful and that means he's we've got territory going out sort of all the way out here now which is um uh, and only uh, well out to here but mostly this out, out this way um presumably he's going to be putting some walls across here to 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 to, to make the area area safe um but he says that the reason he's been doing it is to go is to go and get more coal 
Uh, I don't know if he's made. If, I don't know if he's actually made the mines yet. Uh, oh yes, he's, he's, he, yes, there's one. That, that's a new mine, and, and that one as well. So we've got a new coal mine down here that has a massive quantity of it. And presumably, this is because we've been basically turning all of the coal into plastic. So we've just been ripping through massive, massive quantities of it, and probably other things as well. So, we've, so now, yeah, we've got more coal available here. There's some more up here that can be uh, that a mine could be put on without too much difficulty. And <laughs> yes, the um, the uh, what do you call them? It. Um, air purification belt has been has been split here and then extended to go up and round the mine um i guess yeah i suppose there's no harm in having an additional run of um run of the uh, things through through the middle here it'll it'll just clean clean the area up a bit more so yeah sure um so yeah this this is this is the, this is a sort of defensive wall it's not defending in the traditional way as in it's not defending with guns it's defending with um defending with uh, it, ecological systems instead so we're, we're cutting out the pollution which means hopefully the biters won't want to attack uh, and therefore we won't need to defend against an actual attack especially as they're blooming miles away and as you can see that is more than capable of dealing with the pollution from those coal mines he's also expanded to the south a bit as well uh, that looks like this yes this area down here so this this we see here in the middle of a um, in the middle of an expansion by the looks of it so this is another one of those defensive stations i was talking about um but as you can tell by the sheer quantity of biters nearby he's not used that he's not brought the artillery in yet so presumably some point early on in the next stream the artillery train will turn up here it will shell everything on this uh, peninsula and then probably be used to shell everything down to out to about i don't know probably about here as well manually that will clear all this area out. We can have some more walls. Uh, there's some more uh, core mining patches out here. So this will be nice. There's one, two, three, four, four, four more of them. Um, five more if we push a little bit more further out this way. And so that will allow us to... Uh, some more core fragments coming through. And that will allow us to keep the core mac fragment processing that goes on over here running absolutely constantly, a bit more solidly. Um, we may need to upgrade these to blue belts but if, 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 we, if we do bring in, bring in even more. Um, but at the moment we seem to be doing quite well as um although admittedly this this train doesn't have a core a core station to go off to to go and get some more but it's basically working we've got quite a lot of it coming in oh no there we go there's a gap there so <laughs> it's not quite fast enough but it's mostly working which is why as i say we could do with those extra few extra few um core mining areas so i think that brings you up to date uh, i haven't said a huge amount about what mark's been doing because with him being with him having been doing combat related stuff that tends to take a lot of time but you don't have an enormous amount to talk about because you just go out there, you spend ages pummeling away at the biters and then someone like me comes out and says, oh yes, he's liberated this whole area. Well done there. Jolly good show. Um, and it's just, yeah, it, it, the, the, amount of the amount of F time and effort taken to do it compared to the amount of time and effort taken to talk about it is somewhat, uh, somewhat imbalanced, should we say. But that brings you back up to date. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And as I said, please subscribe uh, if you have. Uh, subscribe even if you haven't. I mean, I don't. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take any subs subscriptions that come my way. Um, <laughs> but yes, also please come along on Monday where we shall be uh, carrying on with the stream here. My plan is to head off to um, space. So let's see. Oh yes, let's have a little bit of a talk about what we're doing next time. My plan is to go back up into space and start working on that production science that I was talking about. That's not FNEI. This is FNEI. Uh, production science. This one, which is quite complicated but a lot of the complications are in areas that we have now solved so there's a big complication in needing vulcanite there's a complication in needing iron ingots and productivity modules all these have now been solved on other pl in other places so we can now bring in all of those things simply by train or by delivery cannon or whatever there's still a bit of stuff to be done, like making the uh, machine learning data, which means that I need to make blank data cards, which uses is the data, data substrates. But I've also, actually, I've, no, I've already started making the da data cards, so that's all right. I think I might be making machine learning data as well for um, for space science. No, no, I'm not, but I am making the cards, I think. Let's, have, let's check that out, because I'm, cit I'm citation needing myself now. No, apparently I'm not. Oh no, I'm not making the um, the the data cards. I thought I thought I was. I thought I started using those for something. Um, I thought they were required somewhere in the in the space science, but they're not. So okay, I'll need to. I will need to. That's the wrong button again. I will need to start making. Still need to start making the blank data cards in order to make the uh, proper in order to make the machine learning data. I'm also going to need to start worrying about thermofluid because uh, I don't think I've started making that. No, I haven't. Uh, so that's going to be a fairly big thing. I need to start making plasma, but that's just just lithium and chemical gel and chemical gel is cosmic water and petroleum gas i've got cosmic water i think uh yes cosmic water i've got so i'll need to make chemical gel and petroleum gas as well um so there's a bit of a bit, bit of faffery required there that might actually have to be shipped up by uh 
um, by deliver by in barrels, which upsets me a bit. Lithium is fine. We've got that. Vulcanite we've got, uranium we've got, iron ingots we've got, productivity models we've got. So we all then need to pull all of that together, can start making production science, and then hopefully fairly quickly afterwards I'll be able to start making utility science. Maybe that won't be too many extra things. So processing belt, belt, belts, it's a weird thing to require, but okay, sure. Efficiency modules we've got, cryonite rods we've got, machine learning data we will have by then, and thermofluid we'll have by then. So yeah, there's not really going to be much, there's not going to be any new challenges in here. This is just going to be, oh, so once I've got utility, once I've got production science up and running, I'll be able to get utility science up and running quite quickly and easily. So yes, that's um, that's going to be my cha my challenge for uh, for next time. I should be getting on with that. Uh, I should also be carrying on with uh, Dyson Sphere program on Wednesday. That's going really well. But there's product, there's product, there's um, resource limitation problems everywhere that I need to go in and stamp on. You'll find out all about those in tomorrow's video. Because <laughs> yes, there's also the videos at the weekend, Tuesday, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, two two Factorio and one Dyson Sphere program update videos to tell you everything we've been up to in the last um, in the last uh, in in the previous streams. And I've got. Um, I've started, I've started managing to produce some of the uh, Factorio tutorial videos and GTA videos as well. Those come out on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Please make sure you watch watch those as well because they're they're either interesting and, and teachy in the case of the Factorio ones, or they're a lot of fun and uh, lots of action in the case of the um, in the case of the GTA ones. So yeah, please, uh, they're very worth watching. Finally, please check out the uh, stream sponsor. That's tree4.be. Use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout to get 20% off a, a server hosting um, for Minecraft or Factorio or Seven Days to Die, Mindustry, all that sort of stuff. They're they're really good. We've been using them for for this stream. I'm also using them for the um, supporter uh, Factorio game or, um, that's running for for any for any any channel supporters through the Discord. So if you want to get get in on that, please come along to the Discord and um, and ask about it. So once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>